Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sinus of FanDuel, who's wrapping up the week with a full slate of baseball games, mostly. What's going on, Jim? Yeah, full slate of baseball games, including our first game at Coors Field this year, Greg. So happy Coors Day to you. Uh, pretty excited about that. How are you doing? It's been too long. I have no Coors in my life. I, I've missed it desperately. But so I am doing fantastically that we are back tonight at Coors Field for opening day there and opening day at Yankee Stadium as well. So let's begin building our lineup. Let's go with the high price pitcher that you'll be putting in the lineup for today. And we'll start with you, Darvish. Darvish is $9,100 for the Cubbies today over on FanDuel. And the Cubs uh, rained out yesterday, ready to go here today. Uh, why is you, Darvish, your guy? Yeah, he saved me from using Tyler Chatwood. So thank you, uh, Rain, for that, because that's a blessing for sure. But you, Darvish, kind of a rocky start in his first start this year. You know, only four innings, only 73 pitches. It wasn't great. But it also was not terrible. Still putting the ball in the zone, still got a 15% swinging strike rate. And I think that that pitch count was high enough. We can expect him to go 90 or so pitches for tonight, which is enough where I can get excited because you, Darvish, can do a lot of damage with 90 pitches. He is facing the Pirates at home for tonight. I will always be in, enthused about using a pitcher facing the Pirates. And the wind is blowing in at 11 miles per hour in Wrigley for tonight, which is definitely good to keep the ball in the yard as well for Darvish. Darvish, when we look at him, since he changed up his pitch mix uh, in June of last year, so it's been a year now, I guess from a calendar perspective, 16 starts in that sample, 2.59 skill interactive ERA with a 36% strikeout rate. And again, he did get whiffs last week, despite not going super deep into the game, despite allowing three earned runs. So I think that when you factor in the salary at $9,100, he's going to be my top pitcher on the board for tonight. If, if the salaries were even, I'd probably go Luis Castillo because Castillo is facing the Tigers. Always love that. He can also get strikeouts, but a $1,000 saving on a slight, or a slight where we want to get to Coors Field, I'll take that every time. So you, Darvish, despite kind of a rocky first start to the year, still my number one pitcher for tonight. Wasn't the first start that we were hoping for from you, Darvish. But like you said, it wasn't all bad. And if you don't want to go you, Darvish, you want to spend up a little bit more, you can go after Luis Castillo. Of course, these two guys were supposed to face each other yesterday. They get rained out. Both pushed back a day. You, Darvish, now facing off uh, against Pittsburgh Pirates. And you have uh, Luis Castillo in Detroit, which is where we head to next. Because while we're not getting Luis Castillo versus you, Darvish, we are getting Luis Castillo against the Ball and Spencer Turnbull is seventy eight hundred dollars tonight on Fanduel and you're in Jim. Yeah, how can I not be in Greg after what he did last week to this very same Reds offense? Now I should say. In general, I'm not a big fan of using pitchers who are facing the same team for the second consecutive start because familiarity is big. They just saw Turnbull's nasty slider last week, and they kind of know what they're getting out of that. But the problem is. They couldn't do anything with that slider last week. And I think that when you see him at $7,800 in a slate where we want to get to Coors Field and there aren't a lot of other low-salaried pitchers I want to use, I think we do wind up going to Turnbull despite that repeat matchup with the Reds. In that matchup last week, Turnbull's swinging strike rate was 17.2%. That is absolutely disgusting. Leaning more on that nasty slider, and he had eight strikeouts over five innings of work on 87 pitches, did walk four batters, so a slight concern there, but the strikeouts are good. It's not just this one star for Spencer Turnbull. We don't want to overreact to one star, but he's been showing some life for a while now, leaning on that slider more over his past 12 starts, dating back to last year. And in those 12 starts, the strikeout rate is 27%. That's pretty good. Now, again, he's facing the Reds for the second consecutive start. That is not ideal, but he's at home. He is facing a team that will strike out, obviously, and he's $7,800 on a slate where it's not just Coors Field, but also the Yankees in a really good spot, and I'd love to get exposure to some of them, too. So I'm kind of into Spencer Turnbull. If your risk tolerance is lower than mine, don't go here. Go elsewhere. Just pay up for, for you. Pay up for Castillo. But if you are okay with risk, you are okay taking on some volatility, which I am, I think Spencer Turnbull may be your guy. $7,800. It could suck, Greg, but it might not. And I think that's a worthwhile gamble given the upsides for him on this slate. Those are always my favorite kind of Jim Sinus picks, right? It could suck, but it might not. And that's what Spencer Turnbull is. Well, he always is. He's not a bad pitcher, although the record does not indicate that from last year. Facing off against the Reds for the second time this season, I get the worry. But the upside is immense when you can get more Rockies and Yankees into your lineup tonight. So Spencer Turnbull, if you don't want to pay up for Luis Castillo, you don't want to pay up for you, Darvish, 
That's your Turnbull is your guy. Let's move on to the top hitter here, and no surprise, we talked a lot about Coors Field thus far, and that brings us to, well, the best player that plays at Coors Field on a daily basis, and that is Nolan Arenado. He's $4,100 today uh, for the Rockies. Arenado uh, still starting to get it going, and why not do it in Coors Field? Absolutely. And I think the big allure of Nolan Arenado for me today is that he doesn't strike out because he's facing Garrett Richards. And Garrett Richards has some flaws as a pitcher, but the one thing that he does that is good from a Coors Field perspective is he doesn't allow a lot of balls in play. That means he strikes out a lot of guys. It also means he walks guys. But hey, a walk ain't a dinger. So that's definitely not a bad thing for Coors Field. But the thing that I like about Nolan Arenado is that last year against Wright, he's just a 14% strikeout rate. So sure, he could draw a walk against uh, Garrett Richards, which is not necessarily what you want out of a guy who is $4,100. But he's also not going to strike out. Whereas a guy like Trevor Story, who I adore, I always love Trevor Story, but the strikeout rate numbers better for Arenado. So if I'm facing a higher strikeout pitcher, I'd rather have Arenado over Story in my life. Just in that one specific situation, again, no disrespect to Story, I adore him, but in this scenario, I do prefer Nolan Arenado. It's not as if Arenado doesn't make hard contact, too. A 43% hard hit rate against righties last year, a 46% fly ball rate. So there are some concerns with the Rockies here, given that Richards does not allow a lot of balls in play, and that is the major allure of Coors Field, but... I think with a guy like Arenado, it's not as big of a concern because the strikeout rate is so low. My preferred stack in this game is the Padres, so we'll talk about them in just a second. But I think that if I'm, I'm fully comfortable going with the Rockies as well, and when I go there, I think that Arenado is going to be the first guy that I lock in for $4,100. Facing a strikeout pitcher, Ian Garrett Richards, you need a guy that's going to put the ball in play and doesn't strike out much. That, of course, is known Arenado the star for the Rockies. And remember, two teams play at Coors Field. So you want to start with Nolan Arenado. Well, you're going to finish on the San Diego side of things, which leads us to the beginning of that San Diego stack you mentioned here, Jim, and that's Trent Grisham, who is very cheaply priced tonight on Fandle. $3,300 on Fandle for a starter in Coors Field. Yes, please. Absolutely. Sign me up as well. I think you could make the, the, the argument that guys like Tommy Pham may be higher on the list because he's pretty good at baseball for number Patis as well. But I want to talk Trent Grisham, and it's our show, Greg. So I'm going to talk Trent Grisham at $3,300. He is a, a mid-range salary guy at Coors Field, despite the fact that he is hitting high in the order. And he's quite good at baseball. If we look at Trent Grisham since the start of last year against righties, he has a 38% hard hit rate with a 47% fly ball rate. And you get that for $3,300 in this park. I am all about that life. I was mentioned that I, I like the Padres stack more than the Rockies. The main driving factor there is that John Gray – a little concerning last week, just a 7.6% swinging strike rate, despite the fact he faced a Texas Rangers team that hates making contact, still couldn't get whiffs against them, and the velocity was low. Now it was indoors, so the velocity being low, a bit more excusable there because velocity does go up in higher temperatures, should be back up tonight, but the lack of whiffs is what gives me pause when it comes to John Gray. So I want to stack the Padres. I want Trent Grisham to be the first guy in there at $3,300. I mentioned Tommy Pham before, Fernando Tatis as well, but Eric Hosmer actually hitting fly balls, potentially on purpose. And uh, if he's able to get back in the lineup tonight, he's been sick the past couple of nights, $3,500, I would get him in there too. But the first guy for me on the Padres team and the stack that I adore is going to be Trent Grisham at $3,300. Trent Grisham hitting toward the top of the lineup. Maybe he's not Tommy Pham, but he's still cheap and cheap enough that he should be in your lineup at Coors Field tonight. So Grisham, one of many Padres, along with Fernando Satis, Manny Machado, that you want to try to get in your lineups over on FanDuel. As you mentioned, though, we're not just stack stacking this Rockies and Padres game. It's going to be Yankee Stadium as well. We're facing off against the Red Sox, and they're awesome pitching staff. So let's find a player that, you know, doesn't really strike out, gets on base a lot, that can take advantage. Ah, there you are, Aaron Hicks. Yeah, Greg, we can make things pretty easy on your graphics team uh, and just, like, make one dedicated square for whoever is facing the Red Sox for that night. And tonight happens to be the Yankees facing Ryan Weber. Couldn't get whiffs against the Orioles, which is a bad sign usually. Six earned runs over three and two-third innings. Barely any whiffs. We're going to stack the Yankees tonight. And the way we can do that without, you know, busting the bank open is going with Aaron Hicks, who is $2,900. He's batting fit for the most part against righties. And for a guy who has the pop that Eric Hicks has, I am definitely on board with that. Had a double last night, had a dinger a couple of nights ago as well. And it seems like Aaron Hicks slowly getting that timing back after all the missed time last year. You kind of expect 
a bit of a slow start out of Aaron Hicks, which is why the strikeout rate is a little bit higher than you would like it to be. But he is making hard contact when he does connect. He is batting fifth. He is $2,900. The long-term form for Aaron Hicks against righties is quite good. I think that's all attractive. Now, I'd mentioned that if Mike Ford happens to play again, as he did a couple of nights ago against the righty, sign me up there because we could get two value bats in this Yankees lineup, and I am all about that life. But if we're going just based on the default lineup against righties, it's probably going to be Aaron Hicks as the main value play here. $2,900 if Labor Torres is able to play tonight uh, after that elbow injury last night. Would definitely like him as a mid-range guy too, but Hicks, $2,900 helping you get to those more expensive Yankees, and I will happily take that with the power he's showing so far. Aaron Hicks has the power to go out on any day, facing the Red Sox pitching even more so. And if Mike Ford is in the lineup, and it was Luke Voigt that played last night at the big grand slam for the Yankees in the first inning, Mike Ford should get an opportunity tonight to take advantage of Ryan Weber, which makes another cheap option for you for the Yankees to get in there on FanDuel. One last player to get to. It's a new game to talk about, and that's with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Cole Calhoun is your guy, a starting outfielder for a, 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 te- a decent team and a decent lineup for a more than decent price. Yeah, $2,700, Greg, for any guy batting second is generally going to be something I'm going to be in on. And it helps that Cole Calhoun, last year against righties, really turned things on, especially after he came back. Like, Cole Calhoun was legit pretty good. Overall, last year against righties, a 44% hard hit rate, a 38% fly ball rate. Those are really good numbers, especially when you put him batting second in, as you said, a competent lineup for Arizona. They're facing Tony Gonsolin. Gonsolin, a 20% strikeout rate as a starter last year that is lower than you would hope, and he allows a lot of hard contact. So I think that if you're looking for value plays, I would turn to Arizona. Like, if we don't get Mike Ford as a value play in the Yankees, I think Arizona might be the best value stack on the board. Not only is it Cole Calhoun, yeah, Christian Walker doesn't strike out as much as you would think against righties and really good power numbers. David Peralta, not as much of a fly ball guy as I would like, but hey, he's $2,600. Walker is $2,400. Calhoun is $2,700. If you lock in those three guys in Arizona, you can use you Darvish as your pitcher and still go nuts with your other batter. So I think that's probably a route I will take pretty often for tonight, depending on what the Yankees lineup looks like. Like if the Yankees give me more value plays, I'll happily go there. But right now, Arizona shapes up really well to be a salary saver, letting you dive into those really good offenses. So Arizona definitely at the top of my list for tonight is teams to try to save some salary. Cole Calhoun, the best value play within that lineup. A lot of pop against righties, $2,700. Great spot in the order. I will happily take that for sure. Opportunities abound for the Arizona Diamondbacks, a really cheap player who's batting second. Well, it gives you so many other possibilities. As Jim mentioned, you Darvish, Luis Castillo, they get into play when you can stack these Diamondbacks or have a cheap Yankee. So just make sure you pay attention to when the lineups come out throughout the day before you lock your lineup over on FanDuel tonight. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry. Jim, best of luck tonight. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. Same to you. Enjoy Coors Field tonight. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll talk to you on Monday. I will enjoy Coors Field. I'll enjoy Yankee Stadium. I'll enjoy the Orlando bubble. I'm just happy that sports is back. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Salsman. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next time right here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.